हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू अफेयर्स क्लाउड माय नेम इज विकास सो फ्रेंड्स वी हैव एन एप्लीकेशन बाय द नेम कैरियर्स क्लाउड विच यू कैन गो एंड डाउनलोड थ्रू द प्ले स्टोर एंड वंस यू हैव डाउनलोडेड यू कैन लॉग इन विद योर जीमेल आईडी एंड व्हाई आई एम सजेस्टिंग यू दिस एप्लीकेशन बिकॉज दिस इज द वन स्टॉप सोल्यूशन फॉर ऑल द करंट अफेयर दिस इज द बेस्ट ऑफ द बेस्ट एप्लीकेशन एंड द प्लेटफॉर्म वेर यू कैन एनहेंस योर लर्निंग थ्रू हेल्प here you will be provided with multiple courses here you will be provided with multiple options of quizzes and even you here you will be provided current affairs on daily basis pdfs and quizzes will be provided to you on daily basis both in hindi as well as english here you will be provided current affairs with weekly basis and monthly basis also here remember once you have done watching our video then you can log in through this application take out the pdf read that pdf and go through the quizzes that will enhance your preparation same you have to do for weekly and same you have to do for the monthly also in monthly you will be provided with the top 100 important questions pdf and video also that will enhance your learning and it will be a very benefit and beneficial and important video for the revision perspective and not just this friends apart from this we also provide you banking and economic questions we provide you state current affairs such as of uttarakhand up tripura telangana and many more not just this apart from this we also provide you topic wise current affairs and the topics that we are providing you are really important these topics are such as national affairs international affairs important days sports defense science and technology apps and web portals obviously these are the important topics that are being asked in various exams across india so these are the topics that are must and should be covered and will be beneficial for the preparation of the students so such friends i'll highly suggest you to watch our video as they will be very beneficial for you in the long term hello everyone how are you all i hope you are all good so students in this video we will be discussing important current affairs of 9th of february the session will be very important so do pay attention till the end friends these are the homework questions for the yesterday's video that means all the correct answer for three questions have been given here by deepak yadav so congratulations all these correct answers all right now let's move to the current affairs of this day Which ministry has recently signed a memorandum of understanding to develop national level digital extension program I repeat you have to name the ministry that has signed a memorandum of understanding to develop national level extension program which ministry it will be it will be your agriculture ministry that is your ministry of agriculture and farmers welfare they have signed a memorandum of understanding with whom they signed a memorandum of understanding with digital green under public private partnership let me show you here that ministry of agriculture and farmers welfare they signed a memorandum of understanding with digital green all right so ministry of agriculture and farmers welfare they signed memorandum of understanding with digital greens and this was under triple p framework that is your public private partnership framework to build a national level digital extension program in this it will be launched within 6 months and this will also this ministry that is ministry of agriculture and farmers welfare will also formulate a new certification system for organic cotton and derivatives such as its effort to promote the indian export all right highly important apart from this friends remember the ministry will also set up a committee to look into the issue of organic uh to look into the issue of organic certification of cotton and their derivatives all right so coming back it was ministry of agriculture and farmers welfare that signed a memorandum of understanding with digital green and this digital green partnership this partnership was on the trip triple p framework that is public partnership framework so the correct option here becomes option 1 agriculture ministry next Where was the first G20 Energy Transition Working Group meeting was held under India's G20 presidency? I repeat, we are talking about first G20 Energy Transition Working Group meeting. Where was this held? This was held in Bangalore, Karnataka. Highly important, friends. If we talk about it, India is. We know that first of all, remember, India is hosting the G20 presidency. All right, what is the theme on which it will be based? Vasudev Kutumbakam. 
then remember that where was the first g20 summit for this uh, first g20 energy transition working group meeting was held this was held in bangalore karnataka and it was from 5 to 7th of february all right it was on 5th to 7th of february and here if we are talking about it remember that question asked that which two organization has partnered to launch a g20 stay safe online campaign so remember it is ministry of electronics and information and technology that has partnered with meta to launch a campaign that is g20 stay safe online campaign all right this campaign was also launched along ministry uh, by ministry of electronics and urban affairs along with meta all right and india is having the presidency what is the theme for it it is vasudev kutumbakam that means one earth one family one future either of these option can be given in the question and you have to mark if it is given vasudev kutumbakam then this will be right or one earth one family one future next next is which country hosted 19th asian minister energy round table i repeat which it is not 19th it is 9th asian ministers energy round table so which country hosted the 9th asian minister energy round table it was hosted by whom it was hosted by our country that is india highly important the 9th edition of the asian energy and asian ministerial energy round table this was held in association with the international energy forum on 7th of february at india energy week in bangalore 2023 so this question can also be asked that in we know that it was hosted by india the 9th edition of the asian ministerial energy round table in india where was this held in india it was held in bangalore karnataka all right it was during the india energy week and if we talk about this and international energy forum this asian ministerial energy round table where was this held the on which date it was held it was held on 7th of february in bangalore karnataka all right the ministry of petroleum has signed a pact with international energy agency for strengthening the cooperation in the field of data and research and for enhancing the global security stability and sustainability also world oil outlook for 2045 was released by opec what is opec organization of the petroleum exporting countries and this was also launched at the india energy week for 2023 where india and china account on they both country alone accounts for the 40% of the global gdp in 2040 Five, whereas OECD region will account for thirty one percent of the economy. So these particular points are very important. What did you learn? That ninth Asian Ministerial Energy Roundtable it was held in India. It was held in Bangalore, Karnataka. It was during the India Energy Week twenty twenty three, and during this India Energy Week only World Oil Outlook twenty forty five was released. It was released by OECD. That is. organization of the petroleum exporting countries and it stated that by 2045 almost 40% of the global gdp will be accounted by alone by india and china as we know india is also the most populous country in the world next next is who has launched ieee c dot certified telecom expert program i repeat who launched ieee c dot certified telecom export pro, uh, expert program it was launched by k raja raman ji all right it was launched by k raja raman ji if we talk about this the program was collaborated by the ieee that is your institute of electrical and electronics engineers and c dot that is center for development of telematics to create telecommunication courses promote and train students and professional also create various jobs and opportunities and bridge the digital divide if we look at it here that on 7th of february k raja raman who is the chairman of the digital communication commission and secretary of the department of telecommunication under the ministry of communication they have launched ieee c dot certified telecom expert program 
to bring learning in the areas of telecommunication including 5G, cyber security, quantum communication and to bridge the scale gap and this will be the first program launched on the platform is on 5G and beyond see here we are talking about cyber security we will be studying about this that which is the country in the world that faces the maximum number of cyber attacks it will be your india all right so this particular ieee c dot certified telecom export program was launched by whom k raja ramanji all right and he is the chairman of the digital communication commission and secretary of the department of telecommunication under the ministry of communication and this program will how this will help is this will create telecommunication courses promote and train students and professional and also will provide job opportunities and bridge the digital divide it was launched during the ieee standards association workshop that was centered on next generation connectivity in new delhi so coming back who launched this ieee c dot certified telecom export expert program it was launched by k rajaraman ji next next we are talking about shobha karandala ji ji i repeat shobha karandala ji who is our minister of state for agriculture has released a ncaer report on farm machinery industry in india i repeat recently shobha who is our union minister of state for agriculture and farmers welfare as you can see her in the picture here she has recently released NCAER what is the full form of NCAER it is your national council for applied economic research they have released a new report that was titled making india a global powerhouse on farm machine industry this report was released in krishi bhavan in new delhi and this the study for this particular report was sponsored by mnm that is mahindra and mahindra if we talk about it nca ncaer it is one of the premier economic policy research think tanks in india if we talk about this report the report highlights the various challenges proper of these reforms and presents a vision for making india a hub for non tractor farm machinery if you remember friends now drones will be used in the agriculture sector as we are testing various drone set how can they improve or how can they help the farmers to reduce the workload on the farm and increase the output also these drones can be used to spray pesticides insecticides even fertilizers or even be helping in the irrigation process of the farm the study makes a comparative uh, this comparative assessment of the non tractor farm machinery industry also the report focused on india's need to have a vision for the next 15 years to convert it into a production and export hub for the non tractor farm machinery all right highly important and there was a recommendation here given by this report that is that the report recommends measures and reforms by benchmarking global practices that will be examined by the team of policy makers for making the best solutions in the farm mechanization next next is dggi and nfsu first of all tell me what is the full form of dggi dggi is your directorate general of gst intelligence i repeat directorate general of gst intelligence and nfsu is your national forensic science universities so these two organization came together and signed a memorandum of understanding for setting up of what means these two organization are together setting up what they are setting up a digital forensic laboratories all right i repeat digital forensic laboratories are being set up by dggi and nfsu if we talk about it the D, uh, dgci uh, dggi and nfsu they signed a memorandum of understanding to set up digital forensic laboratories along with the exchange of information and knowledge technological advance with skill development in the field of digital forensics all right that means this mou will facilitate these two organization to establish digital forensic laboratories and help into collaborate research and training initiative and exchange technical support with each other this will strengthen the dggi's in, uh, investigative and digital forensic capabilities and help the organization bringing effective prosecutions and secure convictions of the guilty then this will be a significant step to for the dggi to have the requisite 
फिजिकल इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर स्किल सेट्स एंड नॉलेज इन द एरियाज ऑफ द डिजिटल फॉरेंसिक्स और राइट इफ वी टॉक अबाउट डी जी जी आई डी जी जी आई वॉज फॉर्मली नोन एज डी जी सी ई आई दैट इज योर डायरेक्टरेट जनरल ऑफ सेंट्रल एक्साइज इंटेलिजेंस एंड डी जी जी आई वॉज फाउंडेड इन नाइनटीन सेवेंटी नाइन और राइट वेर इज द हेड क्वार्टर ऑफ and if we talk about the nfsu that is your national forensic science university where is the headquarter or where is it is located it is in gandhinagar gujarat all right so remember dgji and nfsu they signed a memorandum of understanding for setting up of digital forensic laboratories next who announced 50 million dollar climate fund specifically for women i repeat who has announced a 50 million dollar climate fund for women it was announced by hillary clinton very important news friends hillary clinton the former us secretary of the state has announced first of its kind global climate resilient uh, resilience fund that is of 50 million dollar from clinton global initiative to support women in their fight against climate change in collaboration with self employed women's association Hillary Clinton was on a two day visit to Gujarat commemorating the 50th anniversary of Seva as a trade union and what is Seva that is self employed women association so 50 million dollar fund has been approved by Clinton Global Initiative to help those Seva workers and in order to help the women against their fight for the climate and for this only the former secretary of the state of US Hillary Clinton has approved this 50 million dollar climate fund if we talk about seva that is your self employed women's association ila ben bhat who is 89 who passed away in november 2022 founded this seva in ahmedabad gujarat in 1972 seva operates in 18 states and has a membership of 25 lakh women in the informal sector all right so it was Hillary Clinton who has approved 50 million dollar climate fund for women when she was on a two day visit to Gujarat. Next, which country ranked one of the inclusive measures towards religious minorities? I repeat, which country has ranked number 1 for the inclusivity measures for towards religious minorities? It will be your India. All right, India has been ranked one among a total of 110 countries for its inclusivity measure towards religion minorities. India has the highest level of religious minorities acceptance. That means we can say in India we are talking about secular. We are talking about that all the people are equal here. Different religions resides here, and that is the reason India was ranked number one in this inclusivity measure towards religious. minorities india was followed by south korea on second position japan panama and us all right and respectively that is second was south korea third was japan fourth was panama and fifth was your united states of america if we talk about the bottom list maldives afghanistan and somalia are at the bottom of this list if we you can see here that south korea japan that is second position third fourth and fifth here all right and total was 110 countries out of which the first position was of india in this inclusivity measure towards religious minorities next curtailing pollution is essential to reduce superbugs as per unep report according to a recent report that was released by unep the headquarter of united nation environment program is in nairobi kenya the name of the report was bracing for superbugs strengthening environmental action in the one health response to antimicrobial resistance reduction of pollution created by pharmaceuticals agricultures and healthcare sectors is essential to reduce the emergence transmission and spread of superbugs all right highly important superbugs are other instances of antimicrobial resistance and basically what are is your antimicrobial resistance antimicrobial resistance is basically when a human is resistant to a particular disease that means the no longer uh, or you can say a human is 
not resistant to that particular disease that means that these vaccines that we have been using or the medicines that we have been using against that particular disease is now not working and that particular disease has taken resistance against that particular medicine or vaccine all right and now we are seeing that many news has been coming up that we are seeing that the vaccines needed to change in the upcoming years because now the viruses and bacteria are have developed this antimicrobial resistance next here you can see according to who amr is listed among the top 10 global threats to health it is estimated that in 2019 around 1.27 million deaths were attributed to drug resistant infection and 4.95 million deaths were associated with bacterial amr that is your antimicrobial resistance it is estimated that antimicrobial resistance causes 10 million additional direct deaths annually by 2050 and amr is also expected to result in a gdp drop of fat at least 3.4 trillion annually by 2030 to push around 24 million people into extreme poverty next according to cloudsec which country accounts for most cyber attacks all right which country accounts for the most cyber attack it will be your and this uh, cyber attacks in asia mark this we are talking about which country accounts for most cyber attacks in asia in 2022 it is your india according to a report that was released that is global threat landscape report of 2122 this was released by cloud sek cloudsec that is a contextual artificial intelligence company that predicts cyber threats and india is the most targeted country by hackers in asia 2022 all right globally india is the second most targeted country in the world while usa is on the first position globally and if we are talking about asia in asia remember in asia india is the most targeted country by cyber attacks and remember the number of cyber attacks that are targeting India has increased by almost 24.3% in 2022 where Indonesia, Russia and China are third, fourth and fifth most targeted countries in 2022. So globally if we are talking USA is on the top, India is on the second, Indonesia on third, Russia on fourth and China on fifth. Then Asia Pacific, Europe and North America are the most targeted regions in both the years of 21 and 22. Asia and Pacific remain the most targeted regions receiving 20.4% of all the attacks in 2021 and 24.1% of all the attacks in 2022. Also remember Europe was the third most targeted region in 2021. But for this year 2022 is important, this list is highly important and if asked about Asia, then remember for Asia, India has is on the top with the maximum number of cyber attacks. Next we are talking about banking. In banking, remember recently a sustainable equity fund was launched by Bajaj Alliance Life. If we talk about this, it is benchmarked to Nifty 100 ESG that your economic social governance index. This fund will keep to ensure the ESG quotient of investors decision remains strong as it will park investors money in businesses that have high economic social governance scores. Also apart from this remember it is Bajaj Alliance Life Sustainable Equity Fund that was launched and this will enable investors to invest in companies that have social responsible and have been evaluated on the relevant that is your ESG that we are talking about environment social and governance factor. Next next is global fintech Ascenda announces partnership with Axis Bank to power its innovative new rewards program I repeat. Axis Bank Limited, that is India's third largest private sector bank, has partnered with Ascenda, that is of Singapore, to power its creative new rewards program, that is the Axis Bank Point Miles Transfer Program. I repeat, it is global for it is Axis Bank that has partnered with Ascenda and they have partnered to power their creative new rewards program, that is Axis Bank Points Per Miles Transfer Program. Here, Ascenda is the world leader in enabling good uh, global rewards card and payment value proposition for financial 
brands then if we talk about this that axis bank points per mile transfer program this is a program that is specifically designed for axis bank credit card holders here customers can use this seamlessly transfer their edge rewards points and edge miles to domestic and international loyalty program partners across airline and hotels that means the amount of uh, rewards that are being generated through this access card access bank credit card these points can be used to convert to avail offers on various airlines and hotels also that means there will be discount provided to you on the hotels and airlines then if we talk about access bank remember access bank uh, who is the managing director and chief executive officer of access bank he will be amitabh choudhury and when was this established it was in 1993 that this was established where is the headquarter mumbai maharashtra next paytm payments bank has partnered with national payment corporation of india to introduce rupee credit cards on upi first of all remember it was npci that has launched upi in 2000 16 basically upi came in 2016 and then upi was launched by npci only and now in more than 10 plus countries we are using upi so paytm payment bank introduced rupee credit card on the upi in collaboration with the npci allowing the users to link their rupee credit cards to upi infrastructure i repeat this has allowed their rupee credit cards to link their to upi infrastructure that means now with the help of credit card also they will be able to directly pay through the upi facility this partnership will allow rupee credit card holders to use upi service to pay for goods and services both online and offline mode npci has been in discussions with india's top lenders including icici bank state bank of india union bank and axis bank to launch rupee credit card on upi option all right highly important then another thing remember the governor of rbi that is shakti khan das stated that credit card will be permitted to be linked to upi with the service initially going live with rupee credit card so the gist of this news is that now with the help of credit cards you will be that is your rupee credit cards you will be able to pay through upi and remember friends upi is a game changing technology in the future also you will see upi is going to take over over the world and almost all over the world all the countries will be using upi of in let's say for example 5 to 10 years because this is one of the best method of transaction next who has been appointed as the managing director and chief executive officer of mahindra finance who he will be he is rol rebello he is 45 years of age and he is currently chief operating officer of the company and now he has been promoted as the new managing director and chief executor officer of the company from 29th of april 2024 all right he will replace whom he will replace ramesh ayer who is set to retire on 29th of april 2024 and rol rubella will be taking the place of ramesh ayer on 24th of april 2024 next here you can see rol rebello he will be replacing whom ramesh ayer who is set to retire on 24th of 29th of april 2024 next who has been appointed as the new drugs controller general of india who has been appointed he will be dr rajiv singh raguvanshi all right upsc conducted interviews for the appointment of dgci uh, dcgi not dgci dcgi and has recommended the name of dr rajiv singh raguvanshi as the new dcgi that is your new drugs controller general of india all right highly important then remember formerly dr vg somani dr vg somani was appointed as the dcgi in august 2029 and has received the extension here you can see dr vg somani was appointed as dcgi in august 2019 and now he received extension for 3 months in august 2022 and for the second time in november 2022 and now 
ही विल बी रिप्लेस बाय होम डॉक्टर राजीव सिंह रघुवंशी मूविंग ऑन नेक्स्ट विच कंपनी हैज लॉन्च इंडिया फर्स्ट ट्रैफिक मैनेजमेंट सिस्टम फॉर ड्रोन सो इंडिया फर्स्ट ट्रैफिक मैनेजमेंट सिस्टम फॉर ड्रोन वॉज लॉन्च बाय स्काई एयर एस के वाई ई एयर ऑल राइट ऑप्शन वन इज करेक्ट एस के वाई ई एयर ऑल राइट दिस इज द नेम ऑफ द कंपनी फर्स्ट थिंग दैट यू नीड टू रिमेंबर सेकेंड थिंग यू टीड यू रिमेंबर इज वॉट इज द नेम ऑफ दिस इंडिया फर्स्ट ट्रैफिक मैनेजमेंट सिस्टम फॉर ड्रोन द नेम ऑफ दिस सिस्टम इज स्काई यू टी एम एंड दिस इज ऑल्सो वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट The name of the company is Sky Air, and the name of the system is Sky UTM. That is the India's first traffic management system for drones. Sky UTM was launched in presence of Nitin Gadkari, who is our Minister of Road Transport and Highways. The system Sky UTM will allow drone operators to plan routes, make flight plans, and assess risk before running drone-based operation in India. Highly important, friends. Mark this. All right. The Sky UTM will allow the operators for a better understanding of where they can fly, and this software has been tested with over more than three hundred successful flights. All right. Apart from this, remember this is the name of the company and what is the system name? That is first traffic management system. That is Sky UTM. Apart from this, remember Sky Air also offers remote ID services to track drones. Next, next we are talking about sports. Twenty twenty three Grand Prix Zagreb Open was held recently, and Indian wrestlers concluded with the two bronze medals here. I repeat, Indian wrestlers concluded the Grand Prix Zagreb Open twenty twenty three. That is the first ranking series of twenty twenty three that was held in Croatia from first to fifth of February, and India has won two bronze medal here. That is Aman Sharavat. and anshu they have won two bronze medal all right separately if we talk about aman sharavat he was a uh, he is a freestyle wrestler under 23 and has won the bronze medal in the men's 57 kg category if we talk about ashu the greco roman wrestler has won the bronze in the men's 67 kg category all right and remember 15 indian wrestlers competed at the zagreb open 2023 that was held at croatia Next, next is Uttar Pradesh Chief Minister Yogi Adityanath has inaugurated the first VFS Global JVAC in Lucknow. I repeat, UP's Chief Minister Yogi Adityanath has inaugurated the first ever VFS Global Joint Visa Application Center and VFS Global Academy in Lucknow, Uttar Pradesh. So we are talking about the first VFS Global Joint Visa Application Center and. VFS Global Academy that was launched in Lucknow UP it was inaugurated by whom it was inaugurated by Chief Minister of UP Yogi Adityanath So friends that was our current affairs now let's go for a quick revision Ministry of Agriculture and Farmers Welfare and Digital Greens has signed a memorandum of understanding to develop national level digital extension program India's G20 presidency for 2023 2023 and G20 meetings held in February 2023 key events of India's energy week that India hosted the AMER 9 and OPEC's released world oil outlook for 2045 K Rajaraman launched IEEE C dot certified telecom export program Shobha Karan Dlaje who is a minister of state for agriculture has released NCAER report on the farm machinery industry in India DGGI and NFSU has signed a memorandum of understanding for setting up of digital forensic laboratories Hillary Clinton has announced 50 million dollar climate fund for women India has ranked first out of 110 nations for inclusivity measures towards religious minorities for the global minority report curtailing pollution is essential to reduce superbugs as per unep cloudsec report that india accounts for most cyber attacks in asia 2022 next is bajaj alliance life unveiled sustainable equity fund global fintech ascenda announced partnership with axis bank to power its innovative new rewards program paytm payment bank has partnered with npci to introduce rupee credit card on upi Rol Rebello has appointed MD as and CEO 
ऑफ महिंद्रा फाइनेंस डॉक्टर राजीव सिंह रघुवंशी हैज बीन अपॉइंटेड एज द न्यू ड्रग्स कंट्रोलर जनरल ऑफ इंडिया स्काई एयर हैज लॉन्च स्काई यूटीएम दैट विल बी इंडिया फर्स्ट ट्रैफिक मैनेजमेंट सिस्टम फॉर ड्रोन एंड दिस इज वन ऑफ द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट करंट अफेयर्स फॉर दिस वीडियो नेक्स्ट इज ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी थ्री ग्रैंड पेक जारगेब ओपन इट वॉज हेल्ड इन क्रोशिया एंड इंडियन रेसलर हैज वन टू ब्रॉन्ज मेडल्स हेयर देन नोटेड कन्नड राइटर एंड साहित्य अकेडमी अवार्डी के वी थ्रूमलेश हैज पास द वे रिसेंटली यूपीज चीफ मिनिस्टर योगी आदित्यनाथ ऑल्सो इनोग्रेटेड द वर्स्ट वी एफ एस ग्लोबल जे वी ए सी इन लखनऊ इंपॉर्टेंट मार्केट सो दीज वर योर इंपॉर्टेंट करंट अफेयर फ्रेंड नाउ लेट्स गो टू द होमवर्क सेक्शन फर्स्ट मोनेलू रोका बॉटी हैज बीन अपॉइंटेड एज द फर्स्ट फीमेल प्राइम मिनिस्टर ऑफ विच कंट्री सेकेंड विच कंट्री हैज फाउंड द रेडियो एक्टिव कैप्सूल दैट वेंट मिसिंग इन जनवरी नेक्स्ट वर्ल्ड इंटरफेथ हारमनी वीक इज बींग ऑब्जर्व इन विच मंथ सो दीज आर योर थ्री होमवर्क क्वेश्चन फ्रेंड्स आई होप यू हैव अंडरस्टूड द असाइनमेंट ऑल यू हैव टू डू नाउ इज लाइक द वीडियो एंड कमेंट बिलो वॉट आर योर व्यूज ऑन सच सेशन इफ यू फाइंड द सेशन टू बी इंटरेस्टिंग एंड इफ यू वॉन्ट अस टू कंटिन्यू दैन डू कमेंट बिलो एंड लेट अस नो दैट्स ऑल फॉर द डे थैंक यू एंड हैव ए नाइस डे दैट्स ऑल फॉर द डे फ्रेंड्स आई होप यू एंजॉय द सेशन एंड यू कैन फॉलो अस ऑन द YouTube channel as well as apart from YouTube channel you can go and follow us at Affairs Cloud Telegram channel and if you have any queries related to the content or the of courses offered to you or the payment which you did on the application you can contact us on the number provided that is seven six double seven triple three eight six two apart from this friends you can follow us on the Facebook as well as on Instagram handle that is Affairs Cloud underscore official. In the end friends if you use a code that is vikas10 you will be getting an additional extra 10% discount by using this code vikas10 also if you have any problem regarding the course purchase any problem regarding to our application you can contact us on the mobile number that is 9677333862 and if you want to mail us you can also mail us on support@affairscloud.com and i assure you that our representative from us will be contacting you soon and resolving your issue